Dark matter is one of the great unsolved mysteries in cosmology. The Italian University of Applied Sciences, Dell Corporation, Dell Corporation. The C57D3 Boeing and Aria, what am I reading? Did you write that? No. It was the ancient AI you collected from the bottom of the Marianas Trench. <laughs> they don't need to know about all of that. Dear viewer, today's video is a bit of an experiment. Why? I'm letting a neural network write this video. And much like Ron Burgundy, I'm going to say and or do whatever it spits out. I'm doing this to teach you about neural networks, to show you what they can and cannot do, to show you what all the fuss is about with the neural networks you've heard about in the news, like GPT-3 and DALL-E. But before we get to what will surely be some circuit-generated insanity, a few definitions. Now entering the facility. First of all, we call artificial systems neural networks specifically because that glob of electric meat sitting right here, I hope. The human brain is an immensely complicated tangle of neurons that, operating the way they do, process information, plan, remember, and think all day about how you said you too when the waiter said enjoy your meal. Artificial neural networks seek to mimic the mind by using artificial neurons that operate in a similar way. More specifically, taking inputs, applying an importance or weight to those inputs, and then giving an output based on the sum total of all of the weights going through all the connections in the system. Your brain does this with axons, dendrites, synapses, and biologically generated electrical currents. Artificial neural networks do it with nodes, algorithms, circuitry, and electricity. Now the real power of a neural network, why your brain is such a powerful tool, is that these weights between connections can change. A certain output or input can cause the entire system to alter itself, to learn. Biologically, neurons in your head over time fire more or less, become more habituated to electrical signals, make new connections, leading to memories, new skills, everything your mind does. Artificial neural networks don't have eyes, ears, or kick-ass biceps, so they mimic this process by taking in data given to them, sending it through their weighted nodes, giving an output, and then changing all the weights in the system or not based on how successful the output was. That's how a neural network, for example, fed billions of images over time, can recognize a dog or a cat. Now notice how nothing I just said necessitates intelligence nor implies its creation. Neural networks are just a clever way to get machines acting like human brains, which we know are already very, very good at what turn out to be ludicrously complicated tasks like seeing any image and being able to categorize it. This is why something like a large language model like that GPT-3 that got that Google engineer fired is not de facto sentient. Is it really that hard to believe that a computer system that is built to act like a brain can sound human after literally having more conversations than you will ever have in a thousand lifetimes? But all that being said, there is still something a little hmm, mysterious about a successful neural network. Even though today's neural networks are already doing some amazing things, they are still so-called black box functions. You can give a good one, for example, a picture of a cat. It will take that input, run it through all its connections and weighted nodes, and then give you the output, cat. But how exactly it did that is all within this metaphorical black box. You cannot go in and see all the connections and their weighting to determine why it determined what it did. It, and that's inherently a little disconcerting. One of the most amazing examples of this came in 2020, when MIT announced that it had found a brand new antibiotic, the first new class of antibiotics in decades, that was able to kill certain strains of bacteria that, up until that moment, had been resistant to all known treatment. The researchers made this amazing breakthrough by giving an AI training sets of thousands of molecules complete with weight, bond, and possible antibacterial property data. After all this training, they gave it thousands of candidate molecules to evaluate, a task that would have taken thousands of people many, many years to do, and it found one, halicin, 
named after the AI in 2001 A Space Odyssey, with attributes humans didn't even know existed. To this day, we still don't know how the AI did this, how it saw connections we missed for decades. And what's really going to bake your noodle later on is that the AI was likely seeing patterns human brains can't even understand, all while without understanding them itself. Examples like this seem like they could change huge aspects of humanity, and yet they're still kind of spooky, right? Well, this is the potentially limitless potential of systems like these. Find life-saving drugs we never could have, or think of art that we could never even conceive of, or possibly lead to like a Skynet situation if we're not careful, but we're not there yet. Your skull's probably fine. Administrator, the ancient AI is now requesting that you- One second. There's definitely not an ancient AI from Mars that wants anything from us. No, it's just, one second. Shush, Arya. Right. There is not an AI from Mars being trained on demon core memes downstairs. Oh, nothing going wrong out there. So, that was a grand overview of what neural networks are. If you want to know more, you want to know their intricacies, especially mathematical, I highly recommend this fantastic video series by my colleague 3 Blue, one brown which will be in the comments below. But, to the main event. The first science video written entirely by AI. Using a text generating system from OpenAI, I will start with a generically sciencey prompt and then follow whatever the script wants me to do. I'll feed the successful bits from that script back into the system to continue it, and I have no idea where that endpoint is going to take us, but I have a good feeling that it's going to be weird. Science help us. Here we go. Today's video is sponsored by BetterHelp. You know, when I'm not sciencing, I'm trying to live my very best life. Now, that doesn't just mean eating right and working out until you puke. No, it means acknowledging and taking care of the only muscle in your body that really matters. This one right here. Your brain is not a muscle. Shh. Get help that is better. BetterHelp. BetterHelp is professional counseling done securely and with a licensed professional therapist online. After the service assesses your needs, get matched for weekly phone or video sessions with your expert therapist. Log on to your account anytime to send them messages and change your counselor at any time for free. Don't sit in a waiting room, don't get stuck with the only therapist in your area, don't pay more than you have to because you get access to financial aid. If you want to start living your very best life, if you want to start achieving your brain goals, try going to betterhelp.com slash Kyle Hill for 10% off your first month. Look, I can't say it's for everyone, but it could be for you. Mental health is health. Get help that is better. BetterHelp. Black holes are some of the most fascinating objects in the universe. But as I've reported on the surface of the universe long enough, there is very little understanding of such phenomena. Why? In short, the universe seems to run on a perpetual cycle of events, and for that, a large part of the explanation goes back to massive, high-speed electrons coming from massive stars. At least we won't have to look further than another theory, cosmic inflation. More often, we'd think that the universe looks at a large number of massive objects, looking at each mass particle at different angles, every 5 to 10 megaflops. But that doesn't quite work out that well. The universe as we know it was created by a fundamental change in geometry. The way that our bodies came into existence. How did you come into contact with that matter? <laughs> the universe is composed of four major regions. The Big Bang, the universe with its big red spot, the universe without its color, and the universe with its dark green spot. The first place these regions are are in the innermost part of the sun. The second place is in the second third to the fourth pole place. The third part is the part of the galaxy that appears on the right side of the moon's orbit. The dark green spot of the universe has an inner and outer diameter approximately equal to that of Jupiter's moon Venus, about 1.3 times. This area is known as the Gravestone, which is the most extensive of the planets orbiting the sun in order to create a dense and dark cloud that forms a laser beam of light that can be seen in interstellar space. The Milky Way galaxy is composed of four large spiral arms in the region called the Grommet, or Moonlight. They have not yet completely cooled down, however, the area has increased to around 20 billion light years in size, 10 billion in today's sky. Rice, which is one of the largest rivers in the galaxy, has one of my favorite things to do in life. I like to think of it as the Spurgeon. Andromeda, 
with its sea of lava. As it rises and falls, the ocean is covered by an oceanic crust. This is called the flooding. There are many layers beneath it, but because there are a lot of these, you can feel the crust and the life forms out there. It is called suspicious. The Earth is one of my favorite places on Earth. It's the best place to watch your dog. I was staying with a girl named Sassy, who was on vacation in Texas. We drove out for an entire year to see it. Ah. So of course, what better way to launch an Instagram account than with a picture of Chris Evans on one side and a poster of him on the other? <laughs> of course, it is the kind of art and science you want in a film, which is where we go from here to this. I wouldn't say so. <laughs> in all seriousness, it was quite fun to sit down with you and talk about something that you are fascinated with. The fact of the matter is, I love sci-fi books. I used to be in my mid-twenties, but it was also hard for me because my brother would go out every now and then to study science and philosophy. I'm not still terribly fond of this subject. My father-in-law, the editor of my favorite sci-fi book, published an audiobook by my brother with such a well-written plot. My brother has since released it. My parents were both very happy with the book, believing it would help them find happiness in the life that they live, but there were many things I did to approve from it. I didn't realize until just a few years later when the book finally made me realize what love truly is and what it could achieve. I don't know about you, but I love sci-fi books. Now. Until next time. What the f did I just read? Now exiting the facility. Thank you so much to the very nerdy staff at the facility for the direct and substantial support in the creation of this here video. If you want to strap on a lab coat, Get videos early, see behind the scenes photos and bloopers, join the members only discord, get private monthly members only live streams with me. Oh, not like that sports fan. You can go to patreon.com slash Kyle Hill and join the facility today. And hey, if you support us just enough, you get your name on every single video on RA here. Lucky you, there's hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of you. So I have no idea how I'm gonna pass the time. There is an interesting thing about creating a sufficiently advanced neural network. It is still an open question whether or not emergent intelligence is what consciousness is. So the reason why you have a feeling that it is to be you, that this conscious sense of you, does that come just from a neural network in general? A neural network with a sufficient number of connections or is there something else, something grander to consciousness? We don't know. It could be the case where we just make a giant neural network with a similar number of connections that your brain has and suddenly this thing's gonna think it has a name. But we're not there yet. Thanks for watching. I'd call it Aria, obviously. <laughs>